already August. Um, I can't believe we're already there. Someone was just talking about pumpkin spice lattes, and I said, Hush up. let's not even go there. Um, so welcome to our August 2018 Borough Board. We have a great agenda today, so we will get started. Um, first, I want to call for the adoption of the August 16th Borough Board meeting agenda. We have second. Okay. It has been adopted. I know I always mess that up every time, y'all, so please forgive me. Um, I'm also calling for the adoption of the July 26th Borough Board meeting minutes, which Ryan sent yesterday. Any changes, anything? Okay. So we have a second, and so the minutes have passed. Um, today we have a couple of presentations, so you know things are going to be moving a little quickly. First, we have a presentation of the Crash Mapper tool by uh, Christine Perday, who is the co-chair of the Transportation Committee for Community Board 4. Um, and then we are gonna follow that up with a presentation about the Mayoral Charter Revision Commission by our own Jim Karras, um, and Director of Land Use. Um, and, you know, he sent, or actually Brian sent around yesterday um, the resolution around the charter revision. We're not voting on anything today, but, wanting to sort of have a discussion, any questions that folks have. I know that folks have maybe been hearing, you know, via media reports about what some of this stuff will contain that pertains to community boards, which it seems like it will be some substantial things. Um, and so we just want to start having that discussion. Is it the plan for the borough board to vote on the resolution? No. Uh, no. The commission okay. will be adopting whatever they adopt in the next two weeks. We don't have a date yet. So, we got this yesterday. yesterday. They voted Tuesday night. So, you know, there is, you know, we will discuss what, you know, we'll be doing a letter, we'll discuss what, Thank you, you know, you all yep. can do. And also, let me remind you that we also have our own uh, Charter Revision Commission yep. um, led by both City Council and the Borough President's Office, which we, hope we'll have a much more robust um, community aspect to it that makes sure that it really encompasses what the community boards are looking for in charter revision. Welcome, Gail. Um, so we now will get started with Christine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stand and uh, just to Okay. So, beside so, being the co chair of transportation committee at Community Board 4, which is the uh, Chelsea and Health Kitchen, uh, represented by uh, Mr. Lowell, there, I have uh, created a long time ago in 2005 a non profit called Check Pets, for, which is essentially for the pedestrian pushing for pedestrian safety in the neighborhood. And uh, we have the Clinton Health Kitchen Chelsea Coalition. September 2005, we have 500 members with block association, businesses, institutions, property owners. And from the beginning, we were always steeped in fact. And in 2005, when we needed facts, we had to foil the Department of Motor Vehicle at uh, uh, you know, the state to get the information about Ninth Avenue, which was very dangerous, and that's when we published that chart and said, look, this is what happened. We got you know, pieces and pieces of paper. We had to tally them up and do that. That was way before you know, Gail pushed for New York City Open Data and Noel uh, pushed and worked on it. This was before all of that. So we, we, we always wanted to say how bad is our problem, and we showed it this way. And. So, so you are hearing a lot of information and you say, you know, why do we care about that? Essentially, the DOT is doing a pretty good job. They have reduced the crashes by 30%. And um, do we care anymore? Isn't the problem resolved? And when you see that, which is coming from the application, you'll see that in the last, in the last year, there were 7,000 crashes and still 8,600 injuries. And, and a lot of them are 
uh, life-altering injuries. For example, my neighbor last uh, two, one month ago on a bike was pushed, con conflicted with a pedestrian in this case, and was sent for three days in the hospital, and and has been in rehab since then. So, so you know, when we talk about injuries, people people focus on fatalities, which are absolutely horrible and very very concerning, but. Those 8,000 are affecting 8,000 families, and you know people lose their job because they can't get. So this is this is still a very very big problem. So we came up as I used to do uh, every time there would be a crash. I used to do a deep dive into even the open data, which is now available. And the open data, you have to download everything, put them in spreadsheets, manipulate them, change the names of things, and then figure how many crashes are there, and how many crashes were two years ago, etc. So it would take you any one afternoon, and you had to know how to do those things. And so I decided to, we decided at, at Checklets to develop a tool so that any advocate could do that without having a technology background. And they, they would have the tool to really push for things. That are, so it provides four types of analysis. First, it provides a map uh, of any period with standardized filters. I'll show you that. And custom geographic filter. It gives you a trend to say, how is it going from this year to next year and compared to another community board, another geography. Uh, because indeed, I mean, you don't know whether you're doing good or not compared to what, right? That's the whole question, compared to the, 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 borough, the borough or whatever. You can compare two periods for a given geography. So let's assume that there were a lot of vision zero improvement put on a, a corridor. So you can compare the corridor three years before and three years after and see whether there was really a change, which is really critical to evaluate the impact. And then you can rank geographies, inter including intersection. And that's coming from when, when Vision Zero was uh, uh, approved or, or announced, there was a report for each borough. And the borough was, uh, had a list of intersection ranked into most dangerous to lowest dangerous and said, this is what needs to be fixed. But since then, there has not been any follow-up and say, OK, are those intersections fixed? Or do we need to go to the next one? So this is what the tool does. Without, uh, uh, without any, you know, uh, really accessible. We get the data from New York City government open data. So this is the official data reported by uh, NYPD every month. And uh, NYPD crash data, it's updated daily. Uh, so it goes to get the information daily. And then we go look back three months in case there are correction. Let's assume there is an injury. The injury became a fatality. You have to bring it back. Mm -hmm. So we do that. And then you can download the underlying data. So you have a map, and you can download the data and then manipulate it further. And there are some useful tools in the application. So, it, so if you have designed a special area, it's, you can download that URL, the address of that, and that captures all the information so that you can exchange it with other people. And then you can also, next month, go back to that same definition and say, OK, what, what's happening now? And then it, we have provided links to DOT website and publications. So if you are an advocate and you don't know what to do next, you are going to, to have a little bit of an, acti uh, an activist guide there. And then uh, you have, we've put at the end video tutorials. So there is about two minutes of tutorial for each, um, each screen to show people what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is go online and uh, show you those functions. And maybe I'm going to sit because it's a little easier if you don't mind. Mm. So this is the, the general. So uh, crashmapper.org is, is free. It's online. You can, anybody can click on it and, and use it, right? This is, and it's current, it's current all the time. Uh, so uh, here is the navigation, map, trend, configure, rank, about, and help, right? Here are the stats. So whatever has been selected here, we show you the stats there. So this is from July to July, obviously um, not. Oh, we are going to change that to 2017 to give you one. You know, so this is, these are the stats, right? 
these are the contributing factors. So every time, every time the city, the NYPD reports a crash, there is a, a selection of contributing factor, not very reliable, and only 50% of that is, is you know, captured. But at least that's the beginning of understanding an average contributing factor there. And then here you have the legend, and here you have the URL, which is, so if you have done a selection and you click on that, it's going to give you a URL, and you can select the URL and save it, and, uh, or send it to a friend and say, look, this is what's going on. Why uh, check this out? And they will open that and distribute that. And it's also here, you're going to see that um, the data, if you open the data, is going to show you Jesus, I can't open that. Here. So you can download the data, and it shows you when it was updated last. And it's updated last because the city updated that last. You know, it's, it checks every night, but the city updated that at 11. And sometimes they wait, you know, one month, or they wait three weeks to update that. So, and then when you click on any of those points, you're going to have the information about, you know, what happened exactly here, like total crashes, uh, street names, etc. Was, was it a cyclist, a motorist, etc. So you get the specific information. And so the thing which is really specific about, so here I can select one year, 217 to 217 citywide. So if we do the borough, we're going to get the borough. We select the borough, right? So it's really easy to do. And down here I say, well, I want to select cyclists and uh, pedestrians. Right? So that gives me this filter, okay? And that's what you get, and then you get the information here for one year. Then the thing which is really more interesting uh, that nobody else does have is the, the custom area. <coughs> so let's say I was looking at this, I don't know what this is, Adam Powell Boulevard, right? So here I can say I want a custom area, right? And I'm going to draw, you know, from here to here. Mm. And you know, you can draw, right? So that gives you now mm. the information. You can have all the filters the same way. Sure. You can have the dates, etc. And what's interesting here is that you can do uh, you are working on a corridor, right? So you, you want to see before and after. There is a crash on the corridor. There was a crash on Central Park West yesterday. So some activists published the corridor and say, this is horrible, why don't you do something about that? Or you have a slow zone around, around the school. You can draw the slow zone. I mean, it doesn't have to be square, right? It can be anything you want. Mm -hmm. You can draw a bid, you can draw anything, any area that makes sense to be studied, and then you can save the URL and then continue to work on it as you go. And that's, that's really very, very powerful in the sense that it reduces, it helps the activist, it helps everybody. Um, so here I'm going to go back to the borough uh, just for one second and go to the next function, which is, if I can go up, Oh, borrow, I'm supposed to select that, right? Okay, and I want to see trend. So this is the borrow. I, I have two periods that I can compare, July to July. You can compare a second period, and then you can compare two borrow. You know, one, the, this line is the city, so that's a reference line, so that you get a sense of the, of the reference line, and you say, how am I doing, you know, is Manhattan doing better or worse than the city? And then you can put Brooklyn and see where they are. So Brooklyn is uh, much higher in quantity and, um, you know, has more ups and downs. And so this trend is only, uh, is by months, and we're considering making it, uh, making it by quarter or by half year because it's more expressive of something, which is one, one piece where we didn't have enough money to finish that. So these are the trends. And again, you have all the filters, right? It's, it's city, it's, it's, you can change the trends and whatever. Uh, then 
the next thing you want to do is compare. So you can compare July 16. So here you would do compare. You would compare. Ouch. I have to grab this. So that would be like a before and after, but I have a hard time grabbing this guy. OK, so let's assume April, April, July, July. That's not good. We need to do you know, July, July. I can't do we it. We get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. It's supposed to be the same period, obviously. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. But I can't grab it here. OK. Oh, I, I lost that. Compare. As my compare. So the top shows you the top shows you the, the citywide. Again, you see, for example, here it was a plus 19% change, right? Then it's going to show you the first area, the borough, Manhattan, and it's going to show you the, the trend. So here we have only plus 18% change, plus 13%. And then you can see the changes, and at the borough it's very high, but let's change the borough and do the community board, which is smaller, which is good. And we're going to select, right, 111, uh, let's say, right? And then 102. Right, okay. I got you. So here we are comparing <laughs> plus 19%. Here's plus 23. And now you can say, wait a minute, in that period, the city was plus 19. Usually it's minus, right? It should be minus. And here it's plus 25. So we're getting more dangerous, right? than the average of the city. What should we do? Okay, and then you can start to analyze what you are doing and why we are going faster and you can use those data to come to your elected officials and say, look, we have a problem, it's going up, it's not going down, the rest of the city is going down. Is it because it's more dangerous? Is it because NYPD? You can go see NYPD and say, what, let's do a partner here. We need to do something about it. And then you can see, you can go see your elected officials and say DOT is not paying attention to us, which happens. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you can make a letter and say, look, this is what's going on. This is unacceptable. We want that, right? And so you can start to have a little bit of analysis to go to the, the, the really the agencies and getting them on your side and uh, showing those things. Uh, and then finally, the ranking is, so the ranking is two years back, okay? And we are taking all the intersections which have had crashes and we are ranking them from the worst to the best, to the, 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 the best, the, the, the least crashes, right? And so if we wanted to, to select areas, we could do Manhattan community, but you see all those community boards, the first one, it shows you that intersection. And let's see, where's the first one for, um, for uh, Manhattan is, there is a way, but I, I, don't want, I don't want to type it. 111, here, okay? This is, oh, this is by community board, okay. Then you can change it by intersection. So now you're going to see the intersection, which are the most dangerous. And that's very, very cool because now you can go and say, I have those five most dangerous intersections. I want to write a letter to DOT. I want my elected to write a letter to DOT. And I want them to fix it. And you know, that's it. That's the way we get vision zero. You start with the 20% the top, which gets you to 80% most results. Mm -hmm. and, and personally, I don't have the impression that this is the approach that DOT is taking. Uh, I, I think the squeaky, and even in our community board, the squeaky wheel yeah. works best, right? So people tell you, whoa, my intersection is horrible, blah, blah, blah. You can immediately come to this and say, well, it's not. It's, it's an impression, but it's not. Or, and then you can go and say, what are the, the really tough intersection? And then we can write a letter and get people to really focus on the most, imp most important stuff. So that's it, Queens, Bronx, I think if we were going to, enter Manhattan here. So Bronx, obviously, and if we have, and you know, I, uh, where is Manhattan, the first one? So that ranks about 600, uh, 500 intersection, but you're going to see a lot of equals, right? So it's not going to show. So where is that? 22. Here, boom. Amsterdam Avenue and West 20, 81st. 
who has this one. That's it. That's it. Tomorrow, you take this and you say, how come this is not fixed? I am, you know, I'm the 22nd most, I'm first, the, the highest in, uh, you know, in Manhattan. That should come to Gail and Gail, you know, can be, get agitated about that. Yeah, and, about everything. Right? <laughs> she gets agitated about everything, but she definitely can get agitated. But you can, and you can look at all your top intersections and say, how come this is not, one of the things, the problems we have, it's not a problem, but it's, it's, it's a tension. The, the DOT is working a lot on corridors because they are installing bike lanes, right? Mm -hmm. But for pedestrians, intersection is really important. So I think having a tool to bring the intersections to the fore and say, okay, don't, you know, it's great to do a corridor and I like that, but in the corridor you are going to fix maybe one or two dangerous intersections. Mm -hmm. When you focus just on that, they say, why don't you focus just on that intersection and make it safer? And that's something that for the elected official, it's really a huge gift to the community if you mm -hmm. can show an intersection which has been fixed. Because people on the ground, they know. Yes? But that's what we've been doing. But we also find that the crash data we get that we don't always know what direction. But no, but that's up to the DOT to do so the job. So what we've done, it, it, it's been a big problem for us, because if you know that the car turning left, left right, on Broadway right. at 86th Street causes more problems, right. or the car was going north, or yes. the car was going south. So we've been working with the police, and if we give them... Oh, good. If we give them particular... Intersection. Intersection and, and like, April 25th, yeah. there was a crash, they will then can, and they've been, our two precincts have been really good about it. That's they will great. They go in and look right. at that, but we have to give them, an really intersection. Give them a <clears throat> intersection and, and Crash right, but you know, I mean, that's that's a good tool also to go to the, your precinct and say, you know, if you want the precinct to have that tool, you show them how to use it, and then you tell them, okay, this intersection, I want you to concentrate on those five intersection guys, mm -hmm. yeah. because rather than saying, hey, we need more NYPD, which doesn't get us anywhere, it really helps us focus yeah. to few areas where we have the biggest payback, and I think this is very, very important if we can all do that in all our community boards, then I think we're going to get faster results on, on Vision Zero. So that's, that's what it is. So this is, you know, and that could change next month because if there is a big crash in another, two or three crashes in another thing, it's going to change. But at least at a given time, it was the highest. Yes? Yeah, the particular intersection that you mentioned is also related to the Port Authority, particularly the bridge. Okay. So there is another it's another avenue another to go, avenue. right? For example, and very difficult. right? Well, it's for example on on Forty uh, Second and Eight, which is on, in our district, right. we have been going to the Port Authority, and now they have started to engage on saying, "Let's fix it," you know. But we have the number, and we say this is very dangerous, and if you are going to double the number of buses, forget about it; it's not going to work. So these are the tools, and then uh, you know, then when you go to about. It shows you how you can do a bunch of things. So the people which are activists know about those things, but this is like a caption of any activist group which comes and say, I have a problem with an intersection. You can direct them to that and say, you can do all of that. Yeah. And then we can do something about it, right? And then um, the help is essentially a bunch of two minute video, which essentially is repeat what I just told you for each mm -hmm. screen. So anybody can take that and say, okay, I, I get it. I, it's very simple, but it's always good to have a little navigation report, uh, etc. So that's, that's the good. We want to thank uh, Gail for giving us some funds to uh, do some of that. And, and we, are, we are available to come to each of your transportation committee and you know, educate them. and. Uh, but you know you can pass it down right now. It's up running and it's mm -hmm. it's open to anyone. Can yeah. you send us the link for this? And yeah, we it's can crashmapper.org. Okay, so we'll send it out to yes. everybody um, yes. after the meeting along with your contact right, information. Right, right. And then for the elected officials, I mean, we're going to send it to the elected officials. But they, you know, I think that should be a little a little tool. Except for Ben, they don't do anything. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I would say that whether you're here. And or not. yes. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Quick question. 
uh, it's very robust, so we can do a lot of filtering and reporting and analysis. But we don't have to enter data. That's nope. being said. Yeah. Okay. The data is in the back, Fine. and it's the open data. So if to the, today you go to New York City Open Data and you take the the the, the, the the, the uh, data set, which is called NYPD crashes, that's the data. So but then, you know, if you want to manipulate it, it's a pretty, pretty hefty job. So this gives you the tool to go manipulate that data in a very easy way. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Are, are there any features that don't currently exist in this build that you would like to see built mm -hmm. in? Well, uh, one of them was that trend mm -hmm. to convert it from. Uh, you know, monthly, because monthly gets very choppy, mm -hmm. to biannual instead, you know, that would, that would help do that. And we had uh, one or two little fixes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are some big fixes. I mean, you know, we presented to DOT and they loved it. Mm -hmm. So they are using the same data for the current year and um, they are doing some other manipulation. So they said they, they were very happy that this tool is out there for the activists to use. Mm. Because they said, when we go and give data, nobody believes us, mm. right? So then people can go and do the data themselves. Obviously, some of the data is not there because it's all geocoded. So when the police doesn't code properly, it's mm. not in there. But it's the same thing for DOT. It's the same thing for everybody. So it's probably under-reporting a little bit, mm. right? But it's consistent. And, uh, and so that's one thing um, that we'd like to do. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so the next topic is the Mayor's Commission. And I, you know, I'm pretty upset. So actually, Melinda Katz told me, calm down, Gail, calm down. <laughs> um, the, as you know, there are two charter revision commissions. One is coming to our ballot box in November 2018, and then the one that the speaker and Tish James and myself have organized along with the city council, thank you, Ben Kalos, is the 19, I mean, is the 2019. So just so you know, that's the context. So we're gonna talk about both of them today because they are both on our agenda. So in terms of the mayor's commission, you know that on Tuesday night, they voted to ask the staff to prepare a number of final proposals to be voted on. Uh, Jim Cash is gonna go over them. Uh, they were distributed to you, apparently, and your district managers by the mayor's office, according to our information last night. That's, I don't know if it's true. We, we sent oh, it we sent it out. Yeah, okay, yeah. we sent it out last night. Um, and one of them is particularly of concern to me, which is term limits for community board members. And we'll talk about it. And I want to thank Board 9 for testifying, because we both showed up at the Bronx. I couldn't go to the Manhattan hearing, but I testified at the Bronx hearing to state we do not support I do not support, I'll speak for myself, um, term limits for community board members because of the issue of land use. You cannot learn land use, in my opinion, in a short time period. And if you don't have that kind of institutional memory, particularly in the borough of Manhattan, we have more ULERPs than all the other boroughs combined. Let me be clear. And so if you don't have that kind of expertise, then the owners of the buildings, the development community, and the land use attorneys are going to be uh, the rulers. So I'm concerned about that. That's number one. Number two, there's a Civic Engagement Commission. It's supposed to, quote, provide technical assistance services, including urban planning and other resources to community boards, unquote. This is my concern. So I complained to the mayor's office, like, uh, strenuously, and we're writing a letter, all five borough presidents to complain. But um, I complained to the mayor's office, and I was told, Gail, you shouldn't be worried because there'll be an urban planner in every community board. So I thought to myself, oh, so the mayor's office is going to pick the urban planner as I'm making this up. Board four is discussing urban planning and land use. Does that make sense? For no. garment no. center. Right, for garment center. I mean, or I could even bring up any area you like, and that will be a conflict of interest of the highest proportions, in my opinion. So I'm just saying, when you're told you're going to have an urban planner, I want the community board to pick it. I want it to be your planner and not from the mayor's commission on whatever. So I think term limits will seriously work weaken community boards, especially in the land use context. As you know, I testified, and I want to thank Board 9 for doing the same. Um, the proposal on the Civic Engagement Commission is so vague and leaves so many unanswered questions. Example, as I said, will the commission and the mayor's office be telling you who the planner is you're supposed to hire? 
Uh, when will you get them? Who controls the commission? Right now it's a mayoral appointment, not clear as if it will also include the council or others. Um, so we have very little time to discuss this. My understanding, and Jim will explain, we don't have a date yet for the final vote of the Mayor's Commission on Charter Revision. Very soon, a week or two, something like that. And then after that, and you'll hear, hear more, as a government entity, I cannot lobby and you cannot lobby. So there's a lot, Ben, you'll hear more from Jim about this. This is a real challenge. Now, can, Ben and I have differences on I think the- you can I think you can advocate on the ballot proposal. Our council's office says we can. Okay, okay. Well, let's I was talk gonna about reach it. out because I've gotten- We have to be careful on it messages. though. We have to be careful on it. So anyway, I just wanna say these are concerns that yes. we need to address. Ben and I differ on the uh, community board uh, issue. Uh, just, just one of those issues. Okay, but anyway, I just wanna let you know this is something to discuss. Jim Karras, all yours. This is a real concern. And then we have another concern, which we'll bring up in a few minutes. Uh, great. So uh, you all got the, what, what this appears to be uh, that was sent around last night and that was out uh, front for you all is essentially Do instructions. Folks copies? Instructions. Does everybody have it? Everyone the have one that copy? says 2018 Charter Vision Commission Resolution, August 14, 2018. Mm -hmm. it, it appears to be instructions from the commission to the staff to the commission uh, on what they should be drafting as final the, the proposals, mayor's the mayor's commission, okay. as final proposals to be voted on by the commission, and then if they're voted in the affirmative to be put on the ballot for November. Now, they have to be voted on by uh, the first week in September. They, they have to be submitted by the first week in September to be put on the ballot for November, which means our understanding is they will vote either at the end of next week or that it might get pushed until the following week. So one to two weeks, you know, we have to, to convince them of any changes we might want. So uh, the, I'll just briefly go through. There's a, a rather large and detailed campaign finance proposal. Uh, it lowers the contribution limits for both participating and non-participating candidates. Uh, you can see the numbers in here. Uh, it changes the matching fund ratio from six to one to eight to one, uh, and it changes uh, the it increases the cap on matching funds per candidate uh, from 50 percent to 75 percent. Uh, now, most of these things are found in the administrative code. Uh, I'm not going to editorialize, but usually, you know, the council makes these changes. Uh, I was involved heavily in the last rewrite of the campaign finance law where we did the doing business contributions. It took us, I would say, at least a year. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, the, civic and, the Civic Engagement uh, Commission, uh, they are establishing a commission. It says, with an appointment structure that includes mayoral and non-mayoral appointments, and other representation, which may include the heads of relevant city agencies. Uh, you know, we don't know at this point, is it gonna be mayoral, mayoral dominated? It's an all mayoral co charter commission that's creating this. Uh, and it is supposed to promote civic participation and engagement. Uh, the one line in here on participatory budgeting is, it will have oversight and implementation of a citywide participatory budgeting program. I don't know if Councilmember Kalos knows any more about what that one sentence encompasses, but it, to me it leaves a ton of, un, you know, who's money, who sets the priorities that are whittled down. Uh, it's going to be mayoral money. Okay. That is the only, it is, is the only thing I know is that it will be in the mayor, it will be in the executive budget in okay. terms of the capital. Okay. And it is capital only, not expense. Right, that, yes, that was in the report, uh, okay. that it was capital. Um, but who will be the persons that make the decision as to who's part of the participatory budget process for the mayoral capital money? I imagine it will be the mayor who determines whether or not 11-year-olds vote or, or what have you in this. And so I believe the mayor gets it. This gives the mayor the power to create a, a, his own PB process. Uh, I, I would hope he would do it with the council, but who knows. Okay. Um, so that's one of the, the key functions. Uh, <coughs> other things are to coordinate between agencies, uh, supporting and partnering <coughs> with community-based organizations, 
uh, promoting voter registration, uh, language access, you know, perfectly reasonable functions, depending on what this commission looks like. Uh, but one line in here that was uh, troubling to the borough president was providing technical assistance services, including urban planning and other resources to community boards. Uh, you know, what does that mean? Uh, the charter says that the borough president is supposed to provide technical uh, assistance services to community boards. And we spend probably, I don't know, 30%, I would say, of our office time doing that. Let's increase it. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot, you know, the trainings, the, you know, the, the legal questions, the ethics questions, the employment issues, the HR, HR. the, you know, we spend a lot of time providing assistance to community boards. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, and the urban planning uh, component, you know, does that mean they will hire urban planners or assign urban planners to you? When will they decide that you need one? Who will, who will be on their list? Will it be urban planners they suggested? Will they know that an urban planner shares the community board's views on affordable housing, on community engagement, on you know, density and development? We, you know, for it to be one week out and, no and, money. and not have the answer to any of those questions is a little concerning. Uh, then community boards, uh, the, the components of that are ter term limits for community board members, uh, four consecutive two-year terms, uh, the appointment process, uh, require an annual report disclosing uh, community board positions, what you did to recruit, uh, evaluation criteria. Now, Gail, in her testimony, actually recommended that. We, you know, Gail thinks sunlight is a good way to make sure that uh, the borough presidents are always striving to further diversify and make their community boards reflective of their communities. Uh, we do a lot of these things, and, and we think they probably got some of them from from the Manhattan practices. They, when Gail testified, they raised uh, the Manhattan practices quite often. Yeah, but Trump was not all boroughs do it, and so we're getting penalized. Uh, and then the uh, other aspect is resources, which then sort of goes back to the Civic Engagement Commission. Uh, language act. There's a language access component uh, of the commission, and then they decided to defer uh, ranked choice voting and changes to the districting commission as you know too complicated to be addressed in in a short period which is what they had uh, so uh, as Gail said I, I actually was going to reach out to the other borough presidents and to the uh, city I actually did reach out to uh, someone from the city council's legal uh, division yesterday okay. and we're going to be discussing for the next w until it's submitted to the ballot you know people can you know should make their voices heard on the things they disagree with agree with uh, and uh, we're going to be right uh, as Gail said we're going to be writing a letter uh, to the Commission we'd encourage if the boards feel strongly about something that you all write letters in the next week and a half. Uh, if your executive committees can meet, or you know, the appro an appropriate committee. That was kind of a question that came up. So could could we do our executive committee this month uh, vote on a resolution and send that out? Uh, What's the protocol here? I believe you have to check your bylaws. Well, well, I believe you, many of your bylaws allow you to take sort of emergency that's right. measures and no. then have them ratified. Generally, that's exactly. how it works by the full board. Who would be uh, the best of resolution? A two-week deadline in August, I would think, it's would emergency. be an emergency. Okay. <laughs> Who would be the best of resolution too? Uh, the Cesar Perales is the chair. 
of send, the mayor's we'll and you send should, around his address for yeah, yeah, yeah we can send around his yeah. contact and it should be cc to the mayor's office well, okay. to us. even more than that is there a draft letter that you have in mind that you could share with us our letter will go out probably by tomorrow mm -hmm. uh so we will send it around Go ahead, yeah. We've written a letter. We had a task force, a charter commission task force, and we just said that we have no time as a community board, can't meet. Um, and so these are the opinions of the task force, just based Can on you that send alone. Us a copy of that? Okay. I think we did oh, because did. it went out earlier this week, and I testified at the end of July, um, and it deals with all of the various community board issues we haven't okay. received it please send oh it you again. didn't okay i'm going to text will right now and ask him to yes. send it over we, we we have a task force we were waiting to get this information okay. um and we were waiting to find out what to do so does every board have a charter task force you guys know oh exactly it's the yeah. ladies family yeah okay so everybody else has its own chart you need charter revision task forces right now right and, and then we would we would send the letter out as soon as we've written it and then at our September meeting, confirm that. Okay. Yeah. Ben. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm, thank I, you. I, I have. It. I I'm headed to something, so I, I'm going to be very yeah, go no, go trying to be as very quick as possible. Ahead. I've been on paternity leave, so I'm sorry I haven't been here. Congratulations. Been Congratulations. 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 And so the only challenge I have in borough board is just childcare. I usually start my day losing a negotiation to a six-month-old <laughs> uh, spoon by painstaking spoon of oatmeal, but I will tell you it is the best part of my day every day. Uh, and so first, I'm just blown away uh, by Christine and the NYC and the CrashMapper.org tool. Uh, it is absolutely it's amazing. Right up his alley, Christine. Right it up is. Alley. Um, I do that. I do what you do with the visuals every single year with open data. We put it into a report. We give it to NYPD and DOT. When I first got elected, we gave a list of the 10 most dangerous intersections in my district to DOT. They made all of my intersections priority corridors. And then every year I follow up with them on their Manhattan pedestrian safety plan to say what actions have you taken. Uh, I would suggest that if you and, and Gail are interested, you should talk to a daily news reporter and share this with them because I think this is something everyone in the city should see. Um, I, I didn't have your data tool. I, I wrote an op-ed in July where I said we should just, instead of fighting over 150 cameras, we should just put a camera anywhere somebody has died. And so that list comes out to 1,300 places. Mm. Uh, and if we only did it where more than one person has died in more than one incident, it would be 131 places. Yeah. And the five most dangerous intersections are nowhere near schools. Right. So the idea is, yes, everyone feels sorry for schools and wants to keep our children safe. I have a child. I want to keep my child safe. But I would also rather put a camera where I know my child is more likely to be killed. Uh, and so the only other piece is just uh, when you give this information to DOT, they will come back with solutions, and you just have to be ready to have the courage of your conviction of standing by them when they want to do bike is sorry, islands, which the district usually gets complaints about because islands help people crossing dangerous intersections or curb extensions with people hate even more because they lose a parking spot uh, or, or what have you. Um, and then just on the charter revision, I want to thank Alita Camp, the CBA chair. She got elected. We sat down. She said, I care about the charter. I said, start a charter revision commission. I echo uh, Gail's uh, request that every single community board, all of you should have task forces, and the borough board should probably have a subcommittee of the task forces to meet uh, regularly. Uh, one important thing to know, because I've begged and pleaded, the charter revision commission will be splitting their questions on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Because the thing I care more about than anything else in the world is full public matching. Uh, and that's because if you ever wonder why is it that the community says one thing, you vote the same way as the community, Gail stands with you and the community, but then somehow the council member does something different, mm -hmm. is I say follow the money and they're getting checks for twenty-seven fifty, and now everyone's going to be getting checks for $5,100. Mm -hmm. And does anyone know where what industry those checks come from? <laughs> and so I really care about the full public match because it means that instead of getting half your money from the public, you get 75% of your money from the public. And you don't, elected officials who aren't Gail, aren't myself, aren't Liz Kruger, wouldn't have to spend their lives talking to real estate people instead of their communities. Uh, in terms of the urban planners, I share the borough president's concern around um, who they work for. 
we already have urban planners. They're called Department of City Planning, but because they work for the mayor, they won't work for us. And so uh, I think one place to be, because I've spoken to them about the commission, was just the mayor shouldn't have any appointments on them. They were like, no, 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 he's going to have appointments. I was like, okay, then the urban planner and technical resources should be a, a subset. And so I guess my suggestion is feel free to oppose, but perhaps the thing to say is we want the urban planners to be hired by the individual community boards mm -hmm. uh, and overseen by the borough boards or just hired by the borough boards. Uh, and, and so I did not get a hard no to that in, in any conversations I may have had. And then one thing I was disappointed they didn't do, which is I believe that if you take, you have to give, um, was just Gail has a triple no power, which can force certain things, but I think that it's not a good thing for only one person, well, I guess the mayor or any council member, to be able to have the final say on rezonings. So the thing that I proposed, and I hope that will happen, I'm calling it Gail's Commission, at least in this room, is that we will give the community boards and borough presidents together a binding power, so a triple no would be binding. So if you can't get the community board happy, the borough board happy, and the borough president happy, then they have the power to veto. And then similarly, because we did the IRFA rezoning, we shouldn't have had to pay for that. That should have happened through the city. So the flip side would be if the community board votes for an R10A, a 210-foot height cap in the neighborhood, and the borough board votes in favor of that 210-foot height cap in that neighborhood, and the borough president votes for it, then the city, whether it's DCP or, or some other new entity, would actually have to do the technical review of the EAS and move it forward through the city planning process and, and let the mayor's city planning commission vote it down there, but at this point we can't even get past go. So, so those are just some of the other pieces. And then just on the land use stuff, I want to thank uh, our borough president. We now have an east side, west side coalition. We'd love to expand it to all of Manhattan. We're focused on closing loopholes. So the big thing we're focused on is voids, but where we could use additional help, and that's when they put empty spaces in buildings that are 100 feet tall. Uh, the other place is stilts. So now they're just putting buildings on 150 feet of stilts. We met them. We met the stilts. <laughs> and the other big piece, which I don't think we win without your help, is the 200 Amsterdam gerrymander, uh, which makes politicians look good. And that's a problem. And then another thing that I, this one is from Olive, which is just the community space abuse. So I'm OK with folks having a community room and even a gym. I'm not OK with somebody having a putting green or a wine cellar, uh, or some other community spaces like those. Call, call me classist and not in favor of those amenities. Uh, but um, I don't think that they should be able to boost their buildings. And then the other new thing we're seeing is the ultra luxury floor to ceiling windows. Uh, because eight feet and 10 feet and 12 feet isn't good enough, 16 and 20 and 40. And so we don't get that done without all the community boards joining this coalition. Uh, and that's everything I wanted to share. Oh, thank you very much, Council Member, because the topic is appropriate. Now, we are dealing with the current Charter Revision Commission, but guess what? We now have to start with the City Council, Borough President, uh, Public Advocate, immediately. The problem is this. The problem is that there are hearings that are starting in the Bronx. They start September 12th, Brooklyn the 17th of September, Queens the 20th, Staten Island the 24th, Manhattan, September 27th. Thank goodness we're at the end. But we have to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at these hearings. Um, and Jim will talk a little bit more about some of the topics, some of the ones that you just mentioned we can bring up. What we're going to discuss is up to the members. Um, that member list, Jim Karras is our Manhattan member. He was probably the most uh, esteemed in terms of and steeped in the chart of anybody in the city of New York. And I say that not just because He's sitting here, but it's true. And so we're really lucky to have him. He will meet with any charter committee or any members of your board. He and I want to make sure that we have a huge number at this hearing. The mayor's commission, I went to the Bronx. How many people were there, Miles? Like 10? 12. 12. <laughs> 12 people at the hearing, OK? I don't know how many were at the Manhattan hearing. I don't know if anybody no. went. Yeah, not many. Not many. 20, uh, 20, 25? Yeah. And 25, 30. You, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we went to both hearings, we went to all the hearings. So this is not, this is not what we want. 
So it's the, we don't know the location yet. It is September 27th, it's a Thursday. We want hundreds and hundreds of people to show up and we will work with you for the next month. My understanding is, and Jim knows better, there'll be three sets of hearings. We have a year and a half. But we need to show that Manhattan is serious and we will work with the other borough presidents to make sure that their turnout is equally large. So that's, you know, I can't tell you, that, now these topics that the council member just mentioned, they're all possible. Land use to me should be a big topic. It's gonna be taken on the real estate discussion, I'm sure. Land use, I'm big, you know, I'm a budget person. I want units of appropriation in there. All of these things are gonna be challenges. Uh, and you'll have many other topics that you want brought up. But this is the time to do it. Um, Jim, go ahead if you want to add a lot more. Yeah, I just want to, Council Member Kalos, please come to one of the early hearings because the, the problem is if, if people don't come to the early hearings, that's going to decide sort of what buckets the commission is going to look at. So mm -hmm. if nobody shows up to talk about budget, mm -hmm. you know, it's a big topic. Yeah. Uh, I personally, I was acting finance council at the city council, I think it's really important to, to change things in the budget process. I know Gail does too. Uh, little changes can make a huge difference. Uh, you know, um, but anyway, this is, uh, Gail put these out for everyone. This was Gail and the former Cass. speaker's submission to the Bloomberg Charter Commission in 2010. Uh, it's not telling you this is what you have to talk about. It might be, it's got some budget things, land use, uh, LPC recommendations, police recommendations, advice and consent recommendations. It's just a discussion point, you know. But what we really need is for the first round of hearings, come, even if you don't have solutions to how something should be addressed, come and raise the issue, otherwise it won't be on the table. So we really need the community board chairs to come out, the council members to come out, if the community boards, if, if the district managers can get in touch, you know, I know you all have lists of community organizations and community groups, get in touch with all of those people and ask them to come out. It's really important because if, they're, if it's not raised in the first set of hearings, the chances are it's not gonna be uh, considered in the year plus long process. And I was just gonna add, have it, I went to the Manhattan um, Charter Revision hearing and I didn't know what the heck I was gonna talk about, um, and I didn't talk about anything, but then going to the Bronx the following day, it, it really does prepare you to kind of understand what people are talking about, and often sometimes it's in silos, and so it, it's kind of remixing uh, the different elements of the conversations relative to what your particular um, constituency needs, and it made sense for me, and I, I hope that it can make sense for others um, because not saying anything is not an option. It shouldn't be an option because it's so urgent, but it helped me kind of dictate what I talked about in the Bronx, which was super helpful. And you were excellent, he was excellent. Any questions about this? Uh, this is what we're all about, the governance, yes. Do we know what time? We don't, it'll be evening. The mayors were in the afternoon. <laughs> I, I believe they're all going to be they're all going to be starting at six is what I've been told, but I haven't gotten. That was the night we were going to schedule our steering committee. Yeah, so I will uh, move uh, our steering committee. Mm -hmm. That would be I don't great. Believe so. okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about the date. They were set. That's so fine. I just wanted to. Yeah, know. yeah. Is it public though yet? Yes. Okay. The date is public. The time and location. Uh, location is what we're looking for. Where, where is it publicized? Uh, I, this was a list I got as a commissioner. So can you forward that to all of us? Yeah, we sure. Will. We will. Yeah. Uh, sorry. No, we, we have uh, we have a progressive caucus which I now co-chair, and now that I know it's a twenty seventh start, yeah. we will now Great. Great. convene a meeting, and uh, we may even ask if you don't mind hosting it here and sure. serving as a resource if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll meet, you know, anyone who wants to sit down and talk to me, the, you know, community board chairs or land use committee chairs or council men, you know, um, I want to hear from as many people as I can. Yes, go ahead and then the bench. Two quick events. Could I get uh, a sign a copy of this to share with our members? Sure. That'd be great. And second, you went over and you, you brought some important points on this document. Do you have maybe a summary of some talking points 
that we can start working with our test. We'll, we'll send our letter around hopefully tomorrow. Fine. Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead. Step in the back. The borough presidents and the uh, city council's uh, recommendations will be done after the mayor's version is already on the ballot. No, two different years. Two different years. But let's say for the sake of argument, the mayor's version is passed, mm -hmm. then we're at a disadvantage. Your recommendations can be far superior. Yeah. But if the recommendations by the mayor has already been passed, how could your recommendations superior supersede that? I can answer that question, and then Jim can jump in. We th Don't forget, we always have this conversation. I was livid that the mayor had his own commission. Okay, he has it. So he's picking sort of what I call governance issues. We're going to go way beyond that. Because he's not really, a charter, he, to me, he's breaking a law. Because a charter revision commission is supposed to look at the entire charter. And the last one was 1989. And then Bloomberg and Giuliani and others had this, fake, in my opinion, charter revision commissions in between. This is what the mayor just did, in my opinion. So we are not going to be looking, I think it's up to the commission, it's not up to any of us except what we suggest, but this commission that he just had, nothing to do with land use, nothing to do with budget, nothing to do with a whole list of other topics that are in the charter. Now, can, I don't know that there will be a decision to overturn something that came up in this particular uh, referendum, let's see what happens at the ballot box. What are we gonna, how are we gonna vote? So the answer to your question is a different discussion. I don't know if you wanna add to that. Yeah, any charter commission can change something done by a previous commission. I'm not saying we're going to do that or we're not going to do that. I mean, that, that will depend on what we hear from the community and what our proposals end up looking like at, after a year of study. Uh, but, you know, um, I mean, look at term limits. They were implemented, they were taken away, they were put back, you know. So it, it's up to the commission to decide. But we knew going into this that the mayor's commission was going to do X, and we have a much broader uh, platform. Yes. Um, we're concerned about advocacy. We spent a lot of the last meeting trying to figure out what we could do and have a strategy for trying to persuade people before they go to the ballot box. The other thing is um, the community boards, what this seems to be is an attempt to weaken any influence and power by community boards. So wouldn't that be something that you would take up next year? We could um, adopt it all of us. To, let's see what happens at the ballot box this year. Although September it would be good if you feel, you know, uh, that whatever happened with the mayor's commission is wrong, you should say that at the hearing. I mean, you know, I, I hope that we have some influence. And bring us your suggestions on community boards, on the land use process, on, you know, empowerment and community engagement. You know, br the only way we're going to know that it's an issue is if you bring it to us. Okay. Roberta? Assuming that we don't like what, or we do like some of it from the mayor that's going on the ballot in, in November, can we hold a, a, a forum with, with, say, our local um, city council reps to educate people? Yes. Are we allowed to do that? Yes. Uh, I'm going to be discussing with the council's general council, with the other borough president's general councils, uh, how, uh, how f what's appropriate in terms of how far you go. Education is always appropriate. Right. Uh, you can always hold educational forums on issues. So if you could just give us some. But I will. I will be giving. Yes, I will be giving more. Because then direction. we can schedule yes. something late October that okay. would be helpful. Okay. Right now, I can say it's a bad idea, and I will continue to say it. But I don't know if I'm breaking the law. <laughs> well, we could have people explain why it's a bad idea. You can idea. talk up to. You don't have to be quiet. I, I so I think just I already we're sending out our newsletter we're Good, doing okay. our hard new newsletter i already have an opinion from our council saying that we're allowed to do ballot advocacy like oh, crazy oh, so okay that's great news okay i'll, I'll call jason or the community any other questions Me. Uh, yeah, it's okay. yes. would it ever be a consideration to leverage regardless of our feelings on this but link nyc kiosks to draw attention to these dates oh, I, I don't that's a good question yeah for the dates absolutely that's yes great idea. Yes, great idea yes you can yeah absolutely um, great idea Yes. Go ahead. In, in addition to the letter that you're writing related to the mayor, the the mayor's commission, um, it would be very helpful to have dates on when the written um, 
written correspondence can go? Because between now and and, um, and when this is, is that already closed up? I mean, we, we testified, but we couldn't have meetings in time. Our understanding is it will be voted on either the end of next week or that it may get pushed to the following week. But so that that's, has to that's go to the mayor, window. which is what your letter is about. And then the meetings on the, the Manhattan meeting on September 27th is the council BPs charter commission yes. we're just sort of starting on that yes it's just very challenging to fit in a meeting in September because of all the holidays and all the we have no choice yep yeah. thanks I'm just saying we have no and, choice and mm -hmm. I guess just Understood. one thing I want to just add to the borough president and perhaps a little bit of a pivot one of the things that I think makes New York great is that I think more than 40 percent of the people here weren't actually born in this country so many people aren't weren't born in New York. I was, wasn't was born, but I've been here since I was four, so I don't really know that many other places. Uh, the Mayor's Charter Commission, as Gail also mentioned, is at amending the administrative code, which both Gail and the City Council can do. When you're doing a real Charter Revision Commission, which this one is, everything is on the table. We can go big and or go home. We don't need to have a strong mayor system. There are other models out there. We can empower <coughs> the borough presidents. The only limit, I think, is one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's one court case. But all of you have experience all over this country, all over this planet. And if somebody's doing something better, the best ideas I've ever had in my life, I've either been given by people or been given permission to steal or taken from other jurisdictions. So I just wouldn't, don't let yourself be limited by, oh, if we change this one thing here. If there's something that somebody's doing better, let's take it and make this an even greater city. Yeah, I appreciate that. And you know, there may be, as time goes on, I know you may not be able to do it all in September, but to have speakers the entire year come to your charter group and invite the community. Because you know, there's a lot, we can help you. There's all of the uh, think tanks out there that could perhaps be helpful. There's academics that could be helpful. Um, I would just love Manhattan to shine on this. And we have to in order to get elders, I think, involved. And my understanding, although it's not set in stone, is that after the initial round of borough hearings, there will be meetings where, you know, experts testify. You know, the staff of the commission will be able to meet with people, with some members. And, and you know, uh, so there will be opportunity for additional input. My concern is just get the issue out there early on. You know, you don't have to say, this is the solution. Uh, let us know what your concerns are. Let us know what the issues are. And then as we work through the process, we can, that'll, that'll influence, you know, well, when we have meetings in the late fall and the winter, what experts do we bring in? If we've heard that a lot of you are concerned about land use, we'll bring in land use experts. If we've heard that a lot of you are concerned about budgeting, we'll bring in budget. So, so just let us know what the concerns are. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so you want to go to your borough, your discussions, or what's next? Borough president report. report it. I'll be very quick because we've talked Thank a lot. Um, in terms of topics that we've worked on, certainly in terms of substance, we are working, as the council member indicated, on a letter that is being signed by several of us to close the loopholes. We talked a little bit about those because you know only too well in terms of both stilts, which we've now seen some examples of, and of course the loopholes for the mechanicals. Everything for a view of the river or the park. So I'm letting you know we're working on that. That should be done really quickly. Number two, um, I am really concerned about bus service, SBS bus service in particular, but bus service in general. When we've called around, every community board is concerned about buses and the lack thereof, and the fact that we don't have the kind of service we need. So we. We'll get to a copy of the letter that we just wrote. Um, the fact that the SBS service is being cut was uh, very far into the plan, hard to find, hard to read, and we are very upset about that. The Wall Street Journal did an uh, article about it recently, and we are backing that up. Um, we did have an excellent tour uh, with the MTA and DOT about the L train, and those of you who are not impacted, I won't get into all the details, because I know those who are are steeped in the issue of the L train. But it is an ongoing huge challenge. I think we had some indication. I must admit what I came away with 
was that the Brooklyn folks are quite pleased, is too strong a word, but dealing, but the Manhattan challenges are huge. So we are continuing to work on that. We're going to have a September follow-up meeting with the community boards, PD, DEP, DOB, DCA, MTA, et cetera, to talk continually about this issue. So those are um, some of the uh, so issues. I will say that uh, on other topics, um, we're meeting with Dr. Katz today from Health and Hospital, and we'll do some follow-up. But, you know, I think there are a lot of cab meeting challenges, as some of you know, that have public hospitals in your district, like Metropolitan and Harlem and others, uh, Bellevue, that the cabs, I think, could perhaps act more aggressively in terms of the issues of the community. And there are many other health and hospital issues. If you have anything at the end of the meeting, let me know. Um, on the environment, you know, the Solid Waste Advisory Board in Manhattan is really active. Um, we have a tremendous website, and they are really increasingly playing a big role. I have to say I'm really proud of them. They are more active than any other borough, and you should make sure that you use them. If there are issues that you would like to have addressed in terms of the environment, feel free to contact them. During the summer, we had a lot of, we had about 100 interns. And uh, two of them did amazing work at 3333 Broadway, which is in Board 9. Yeah. Um, we had an environmental day at that building because there are 1,020 apartments. It's a very large building. And uh, as a result, one intern made a difference, and all of those residents now have a Tuesday when they can recycle. There was zero right recycling there before. So there, that's a city. There is a, a town, if you like, at that building, and now they'll be recycling. One person making a difference. And we had other interns at the schools going, uh, figuring out how young people can recycle. So there's a lot of interest in that topic. It might be something that we want more recycling and we want more um, organics. And that is not always happening as high a percentage as we would like. What we did, we also gave out plain clear bags for garbage. That made a difference. But something, if you want help on that, let us know, just in terms of the issue. I will say we had a um, huge artfully senior, artfully aging uh, event at Fordham Law School, 1,500 people showed up. And so that's something every summer we're gonna do it. If you have ideas for topics for the seniors, um, let me know. The um, funding request for our tiny little bit, thank you Richard for having your book, um, our tiny little amount of uh, expense money has now been closed in terms of the application process and it's just an immense list. So we're going to share with you um, who we fund, obviously. But more importantly, I'm on the case of all the foundations in the borough of Manhattan. They need to come forward and be more supportive of some local groups, right? Mm. These foundations just don't know some of your local groups. So I'm going to share that list with you. Um, it's hard to get those that just give to the city of New York. But we're going to narrow it down with names, phone numbers, and emails. And you should feel free to use it and bother them about uh, issues and groups that need to be funded. Um, as you know, we have some upcoming events. August 21st, we have a bystander event um, uh, that's coming up to talk with, the, with the, doing it with the ADL and uh, our office with uh, some faith-based institutions. And then the African Day Parade, of course, is taking place September 16th in Harlem, and we have our state office building reception 6 to 8 on September 14th. Um, and then in, um, obviously, the Northern Manhattan office has ongoing events. Um, in the month of, uh, week of September 17th, we'll do the Go Bag event, which many of us have done in the past. September 29th is My Brother's Keeper. It's going to be at an East Harlem school. And that is open to the public. We'll give you more information. But it's a national program. And the idea is to try to get uh, better school uh, mentoring support for young people, and it's, it's complicated. It has to do with what is, uh, how you talk to young people, race, sex, LGBTQ issues, and how it's done right, not the way in which it's done, unfortunately, too much incorrectly. Um, we'll get you more information. That's a quick report. I don't know if you want to go around this. Um, I just wanted to very quickly make a couple of announcements. So first, <laughs> I want to introduce Luisa Lopez. Luisa, stand up. Louisa is our new community liaison covering boards 6, 8, and 11, so we welcome her. Um, we will also have a departure. Um, Diana Howard, a very long-serving member of our uh, community liaison team, will be leaving us as of tomorrow, and so we will be hiring a new liaison for community boards 7 and 9. Okay. All right, so let's go around. Yes. So CB1, let's go. Good morning. Um, 
the means that I am is the size of Tzadu is, and I, I'm not almost sure some more of my colleagues about that, about how they're setting up this task force. Uh, obviously, we're moving aggressively now on the uh, borough-wide uh, distribution of closing Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. And um, CB3 and myself are starting to talk about how we can work together on that process. So you'll be hearing more of that, but a very important issue. Uh, we will be relaunching now in the fall uh, a new working group about the seaport, because of the, yep. what's happening at 250 Water Street, yep. and the impact that might have on the uh, new market uh, site, and firming up the museum. Those are the two major uh, kind of land use issues. And, and it holds to the whole point of our sort of revision and, mm -hmm. and the skills in me. And then, uh, we ha I had set out almost two years ago reorganizing CB1 into subject matter expert committees rather than uh, geographic. And this month with uh, Reggie Thomas, we'll be launching a new one, which is the Transportation Committee. So it was fabulous to hear Christine's uh, tool, and we'll be looking more at that. The one final thing is that uh, the major issue for us has been resiliency, and that has essentially slowed to a fall. The mayor's office, or ORR, keeps delaying <laughs> more meetings for the public and, and engagement, so we'll talk more about that, but that's a major issue. Thank Thanks you. Paul. Thank you. Let, let me just say in Rikers Island, <clears throat> you know, we have a task force here, as you know. Um, Part of that? Yep, and I, it's frustrating. I know that now, uh, <coughs> 80 Center Street and not the quote unquote tombs is the uh, center that will be focused on in terms of the mayor's office, just so you know. Um, what was frustrating was there were supposed to be hearings on the topic in April, there were supposed to be hearings on the topic in June, and now there are no hearings and they're going to be starting a uh, process. So, as of today, a scoping process yes. that ends in early October. Yeah. So, this is a problem, and I know the Harlem community was also concerned. So it's frustrating beyond belief. We have a letter going out. We complained about it. We've been very articulate on it. But here's another example of not giving the community enough yeah. time, in my opinion. And, and that might be something that we can also figure out how to address in this whole charter mm -hmm. revision. Right. Between and, and if Board 10 and 9 and 11 and 12 want to have something that talks about it, it uh, we'd be glad to do that. We, unfortunately, we have to do it soon. Um, I'm going to work with, with uh, Board 3, but we probably will have the Euler of Aston, but it has a major impact on all of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So we should all, uh, we'll, we'll share everything that we're doing, and perhaps maybe have a task force and everybody send somebody yes. to represent your interests. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Board 2? Board 2. Hi. Um, so on an overarching issue, um, one of the things we really are looking at um, we have been looking at for years the Seeker City Environmental Quality Review. Um, back in February of 2017 and, and multiple resolutions prior to that, uh, we've been looking at school seat needs because Seeker is so outdated. For example, um, the borough president and council member Chen uh, mentioned last month that there's this huge project going up in CB1, uh, I'm sorry, CB3, that is generating an enormous number of apartments and 16 school seats, which is just ludicrous, but the way Seeker works, you can, you can get under the, the ma under the minimum by one apartment and need no school seats, and two buildings together, if they're separate, don't count uh, together. So we are hoping perhaps um, to get a borough board resolution. It might be something that we might want to put in for charter resolution, but in the interim, we're getting a lot of development and we're not getting seats for our children and that I believe is at least borough wide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm sort of trying to find the process for perhaps our consideration in this body. Then speaking of schools, open green space, affordable housing, grocery stores, uh, community space, all of these needs are being set against each other and that makes for unlivable communities, so there are big concerns when we need all of these things. Uh, our board is looking into housing and small business issues, but if that is, well, you can either have open space or a grocery store or a school, but you can't have all three when people who live there need all three. 
Uh, that is a concern. I'm not sure that we have a resolution, but it's something that I think perhaps collectively we might be able to, to work on. Of course, Community Board 2 is always facing uh, an imminent Euler or some such. That's, that's our fun. Um, we did lose what was going to be a nice significant amount of affordable housing um, at 550 Washington. We're waiting to see if what will be there is something that will in any way benefit the community. Um, and then, of course, for us, as the borough president mentioned, the L train, both on, on our board, both the 14th Street Corridor and the Kenmare Little Italy Loop, the community uh, in both of those locations has proposed alternate routes. Mm -hmm. And what we keep asking for from DOT and New York City Transit are why are these better or worse, or why not? Why is what you're proposing better or worse? And we can't get answers, and this is becoming, you know, April's coming up, and every day that goes forward is the plans that they have proposed are more cemented. Or and we're going to say before April because it's actually, Remember. things are going to be starting in around January in terms of the practice. So in addition to, you know, uh, we've got five committee meetings this month that will then have to be ratified in September. The next two months should be interesting, but but we're we're asking just a really simple question. Look at these. Why are they or are they not better? Mm -hmm. So I'll get we're you. actually we're planning on meeting with the Ken Mayor group oh, next week, mm -hmm. um, and so we hope to take what we learned from that meeting and actually send it to DOT to get an answer. Right, on and that. the 14th Street Coalition. Absolutely. Those those are always at the top of mind, but this is additional. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Board three, board four. Um, I want to start off thanking the borough president. We missed you on Tuesday um, with the opening of the Chelsea Waterside Park, exactly was there, for yeah. which you gave, uh, thank you. contributed, so thank you for that. That was a, a spectacular new playground at Chelsea Waterside Park. Uh, I see pictures, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it, it, it really is fabulous. Um, and thank you for, thank we missed you Tuesday, thank you for your contribution. Um, another thank you for you. One of the big concerns we have is the Harborview site. The, this was a site that was designated for affordable housing. It's a NYCHA parking lot. It was supposed to be a 16-story, all-affordable building. The mayor came out a week and a half, two weeks ago, and said, let's put up a 50-story tower and make it an 80-20 building. Um, among, I was not there, but I heard that the borough president was very upset yep. by uh, this proposal, um, as is CB4, and it's just not going to happen. Um, and then... Um, finally, I wish Christine was still here. Um, New Jersey DOT is closing down 495 between the Lincoln Tunnel and the Turnpike. They're closing down a lane in each direction. The westbound is, lane is going to back up the Lincoln Tunnel, which is going to back it up into Hell's Kitchen. And they have no way, what, what Christine found out is that New Jersey DOT has no way to monitor what goes on on Ninth Avenue and the backup from the tunnel. And the only way they find out is if we pick up the phone and call them. So we are very concerned about the traffic backup that's going to occur because of the renovations they're doing in New Jersey. And we need to stay on top of Port Authority in that regard to make sure they know what's going on. CB5, CB6, CB7. Okay, we're very concerned about super talls. Our land use committee meeting on um, which met August 1st. Basically, we discussed some of the zoning problems, the, the, um, all the tricks that are being used to get the buildings high, whether it's um, a void of 150 feet or 16 foot ceilings or, or taking a zoning lot and changing how you read stuff. So we've come up <coughs> with a resolution to that we're hoping all the um, community boards will agree to asking our wonderful borough president to convene something so we can start looking at zoning. Now, this may have to be during the charter revision, but um, Good idea. Um, we, we also start looking at our soft sites, and we have a lot of soft sites. And I got a phone call yesterday from somebody who is going to be doing work for um, Silverstein for the um, ABC. ABC buildings. Yeah. And the, the Buildings on between 66 and 67th, between Columbus and CBW, nothing's going to happen for five years. But the two studios at 65th, 66th Street, 
and West End Avenue are in play within the next two years. And according to George James, they could be higher than 1,000 feet each. A thousand, uh, yeah. So we have to do something about that right away. The Broadway Task Force is, is moving along, and we are going to have something called Parking Day on September 21st. We're taking, we're asking DOT to give us four parking spaces, and two spaces will be used for dance program, two spaces will be used for CB7 to do all kinds of activities, 10 in the morning until 10 at night. Um, nice. It's a national day. We're going to take videos and photos of it. If it works well, we'll let everybody know and you may, we may want to expand it. It's to make people see that the street isn't just for parking, it could also be used for a park. Um, and then we're working on the charter. We'll, we'll get a letter by the end of this month. Well, the charter has been a big deal. Um, a letter, I just asked the district manager to send you every board here as well as the VP's office, um, our letter that went out. Uh, we have testimony and a letter. Um, the ferry just started on 90th Street. Yesterday was the inaugural run. It's gorgeous and it's fast and um, we're really excited about that. We'd like to see it expand to get to Queens. Um, I know the Astoria run is the busiest run in the city, but it's really beautiful. I encourage everyone to use that. Small business is a major issue and I don't really know what to do about it. Yesterday I was in a store because it was closing 31 years in the community. It's part of the co-op and the rent went uh, to $45,000 a month, which mm -hmm. is an inconceivable sum. The next door business to that also went out, rent also went up to $45,000 a month. Next door to that is a thrift store, which really um, serves the neighborhood. Every thrift store that we've had has closed, except for this one. And I asked them if they were having trouble with the landlord. They said, no, but rent goes up every year. To me, that's a community business. It's a community asset, these thrift stores. And there just seems to need to be something done to help small businesses. The 80-20 rule for 80% of an income in a co-op used to have to come from the residents and 20% from the businesses. I think Mayor Bloomberg got rid of that. And that has had a major impact on on the vacancies and the types of business um, and, the, and the rent. And I spoke to someone in a very posh building. I've known him for years and years on Madison Avenue who agreed that maybe there makes sense to have some kind of new rule, maybe not 80-20, but something. It's, a, it's, a, it's another way of people having to live together that just because they could not have to pay any maintenance at all doesn't mean that the neighborhood is deprived of these businesses. So I'd like to encourage something on that and I don't really know what to do. This issue of small business is, you know, something that I've been working on for a long time. I, it's, it's the most challenging topic to solve. We are working, we have suggestions for, uh, I think, a five borough city council task force. If you have thoughtful people who want to participate, we'd love to hear from them. Uh, I think the speaker would like to also. This is a hard topic. You cannot, you have to have, you have to be steeped in it, and it would be helpful to have some ideas, you know, maybe from... This 8020, I believe, was a federal or state. It wasn't the mayor yeah, uh, okay. change. And the problem with it is that the co-ops in the city of New York ecstatic, love it. So you'd have us Powerful neighborhood people, people versus the understandable uh, board, which has a responsibility to the shareholders. So we're gonna, I, you know, I was, I couldn't believe it happened. It did. It was about six or seven, maybe more years ago. Yeah, I know it's really a shame, and it's had a huge impact. Um, the I. When I saw that about that building in CB4, I was outraged because we're having a similar issue with a building on Niger property, um, Fetner. We can't even get him to show up at the community board. Um, it's the mayor's issue as well. Um, we want it to be all affordable housing. If they're going to put something on Niger land, it should be for people, mm -hmm. not just um, wealthy people where there's a whole ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'd also, so affordable housing and the development and, and trying to press for some kind of zoning change. There's no height limit on a lot of the avenues to try and get something there. I'd like to make a suggestion if I might. Um, since you brought up schools and working with young people, Connecticut has a state law that um, all high schools have to teach about sexual assault in college before students graduate because most assaults in college happen before Thanksgiving from the time that kids show up until Thanksgiving, and they don't know how colleges are teaching about it, so the state enacted legislation that the high schools have to deal with it. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh, we'll look at it. Thank you. 
board? What's None. Going on? None. Um, so a couple of quick updates. Uh, last Friday, the board attended a rally uh, led by Senator Brian Benjamin supporting the decision by the Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse um, in the Department of Health uh, that the residential location for the methadone, for the proposed methadone clinic uh, was not appropriate. Their license of operation was not granted. Um, and so uh, on behalf of Pat Moore, just communicating that it was a model process for how to address uh, some of the challenges that are coming in the community. There's a lot of collaboration across block associations, uh, certainly with the borough president's office, so thank you for that open channel of communication. Um, and a coalition of just concerned individuals who raised a, 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 a awareness and continue to follow up um, on that. And so, um, it's, we're continuing to monitor that situation. It's a little bit of whack-a-mole. Um, also uh, held a dis robust discussion around the charter revision, uh, looking to submit a re resolution, um, addressing some key findings, uh, particularly the term limits are concerned um, in the context of institutional memory. Um, the summer has been productive. A lot of how the housing committee has continued to meet, uh, conversations around NYCHA, HDFCs, um, also uh, thinking about parks use um, and also conversations continuing to happen uh, happen around gun violence and the implications of gun violence in the community um, in support of West Harlem Development Corporation and their Arise program there was a youth rally that was held last Friday uh, I was able to attend it addressed uh, challenges facing the youth including uh, gang activities mass incarceration gun violence um, even kind of opioids more broadly. Um, um, uh, Senator Espaillat was there, uh, Congressman Espaillat was there, and, and everyone showed up and enjoyed themselves. It was very real. It was hot. I was there. And early. it was hot. Um, I was there on the early side. It was very hot. Separately, the other thing I'll, I'll just add, uh, again, I know you and I spoke briefly about it, but the, um, the Harlem Development Conference uh, Biz Now had it at the Alhambra Ballroom about Harlem uh, development and investment. I found out about the event like 24 hours before it happened. There was a $99 fee just to get through the door. Um, and, you know, opened with a panel with Ryan from Million Dollar Listing talking about uh, what's coming to Harlem. Uh, I will say, to be as diplomatic as I can, that the uh, biggest challenge in that space is that these conversations on development are clearly happening in silos. And so um, having better insight into what the collective visioning for our communities is needs to happen. Because straight up, it was, no one knows what anyone else is doing. And so outside of that context, it's like you've got these projects that are going up that aren't communicating with other projects. And so it's, it's terrible for the community and it's definitely terrible for even investors, right, if you don't have context. There was also conversation about foreign investment. They went to China. Within two weeks, they sold out uh, of investment opportunities from folks that didn't even know what Harlem was. Mm. Um, so thinking about clearly uh, what these implications are for our communities is super important because, yeah, I have some thoughts. Yeah, no, so. but let's do that. We'll put that together in the fall. Yeah. Thanks. CB10. Hi, um, I'm John Lynch, sitting in for Cicely Harris, who's the latest week. Um, I'm on short notice, so this will be just kind of quick. Um, so, we have been, um, uh, spent a lot of time this uh, past couple of months on the Mark 125 project, which is very local. I won't get too much into the weeds on it, but it's a um, city controlled space that had been used years ago as an indoor uh, street vendor market. Um, that didn't work for whatever reason. The space has been sitting empty. There have been a couple of local proposals that didn't go anywhere. Um, but the city now has decided to um, give the property over to a, a very fine group called SpaceWorks, Art Space Group, that provides um, affordable um, rehearsal and, and theater production space, which is all, all well and good. Um, but the project was given to them without uh, local participation. Um, we had a meeting about two months ago, which was the most raucous. Yeah, I heard. I will. I thanked her personally, but I will thank you as well uh, for Athena's involvement in this. 
she was great. Um, and she met with us this month with the um, Commission of New York City uh, Cultural Affairs, um, State Economic Development Commission, and the, again, people from the Space Works. And we're basically telling them they have to go back, perhaps open up the RFP, get local involvement, get involvement from the vendors who had been there to begin with. Uh, maybe think about expanding more economic uses of the space. I mean, arts and theater is fantastic, um, but there are other needs that we have and other voices that want to be heard. Um, so that's that's going to be an ongoing issue. Uh, speaking of arts, I think you know, Gail, you attended our wonderful uh, Black Theater um, event a couple of months ago. Well, I just found out yesterday that that's going to be repeated as a five borough event. So Voza Rivers is going to be uh, coordinating that with, um, with our Arts and Culture Committee. So I think that's going to be um, in the fall. I think it's October. We'll let you know about that. Um, the Rikers Island issue is something that we, we continue to focus on. I think I spoke to Pat more recently. I know you guys are doing a lot of work on that. Yeah. Um, and it's hand in hand with an issue we've been dealing with a lot, which is, of course, the, um, the uh, reentry of formerly incarcerated people. Um, voting rights, economic rights, and the like. Um, so we have, um, I'm actually going to running up to a meeting in a moment with our council person Bill Perkins on his views for participatory, participatory budgeting. So we'll see what's, um, what's available there. Thank you. CB11. Hello everyone. <laughs> okay, so CB11 has over the summer has had a host of family days as we've mentioned. We just did the National Night Out with PSA 5, the precincts 23 and 25. We also are convening and working towards the Friends of La Marqueta, which is um, a, a landmark. You know, it's not an official landmark status, but it's a landmark within our community. And so this organization has formed in order to help inform what's going to happen there, EDC, do fundraising, and so that continues as well. I've gone to the Spring Street Sanitation Garage to tour it because, as you know, there's a consolidated garage that's in the plan for um, the old Potamkin site on 127th Street, so they're going to be consolidating three um, garages. One is from CB10 and CB11 temporarily. I, I believe it'll be permanent, but temporarily. So we're looking to see what we can get that's best for that community. As you know, East Harlem has high asthma rates and other challenging health issues, and we want to make sure that whatever goes in there doesn't further impact um, the area. We've had, we have one of the last few remaining three-day fairs. We just had that um, two weeks ago. We are also had a wonderful street naming for William Woodlawn, who was a 9-11 um, fire department lieutenant who passed unfortunately due to 9-11 um, related, related illnesses and so we had a street renaming for him two weeks ago where Diana Ayala the councilwoman was a prominent speaker as well as Matthew Washington who knew him personally. Um, I am exploring on my own to then bring it to the community the East Harlem resources for LGBT individuals I'm not quite clear how many resources we have and so I've been working with the East Harlem um, Health Center I'm um, Jamie Gutierrez and others in the government to see how we can put together a task force to try to see what resources we can marshal and see what's available um, for those individuals I'm happy to say that I attended um, the many faces and personalities of New York it was a um, a beautiful rendering in, Co in Costco, in the East River Plaza, where this artist, Victor Garcia, who's from Miami, came and he actually did, it looks, it's beautiful. It's like black and, and on gray. And so we had the kids from Renaissance Charter, they came and they actually did a panel of art and they're gonna hang that up as well. So he did an art clinic with our young kids. Um, I wanted to say that Councilwoman Diana Ayala was part of a meeting. She started to reconvene the stakeholders at 125th Street because we're seeing a deterioration in that area. More homeless, other, you know, drug use. Um, so she's reconvening that so that we can then see what we can do to start putting in places um, some better stuff. Um, 
And so we are the MTA, Second Avenue Subway, that marches on, and so we're doing forums. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to CB12. Okay. <laughs> Although we've been on, I'm Richard Lewis standing in for Shali, our chair. Uh, we've had a very busy summer, although we've been on uh, recess for two months. Uh, first of all, the, on April, sorry, on August uh, 8th, the City Council passed the Inwood NYC rezoning uh, with some changes. Uh, as you know, the board voted no with conditions as well as the borough president. Uh, with that in rezoning, the Inwood Library renovation also with affordable housing was also passed. We are reviewing the proposal, which uh, is some 39 pages and some 87 points of agreement. Uh, there is some mention of community board involvement, and we have to consider all this with our statement of district needs as well as the budget consultation, because there are some budgetary considerations in those points of, uh, of agreement. Um, on uh, yesterday, I say on the 14th of August, the health department closed the uh, Legionnaire's uh, disease uh, and isolated a source which was on the border of CB9 and CB12, namely the Sugar Hill Houses uh, at St. Nicholas Avenue. Uh, and uh, so I believe there were some 27 cases, one death, uh, and at least a few residents of, of CB12 who had uh, been hospitalized and had that condition. Uh, as a word of advice, uh, even though the incident in this case is closed, there may still be other sy symptoms that some individuals might have, and uh, they should get them treated as soon as possible if that does occur. The issue, of course, is the chillers and the water supplies that must be uh, decontaminated and treated, but also small businesses have small amounts of these. Uh, bars and restaurants, and so that's something that should be considered, and many of those chillers are not registered. Uh, Gail attended uh, on, I guess, uh, yeah, it was Sunday, the dedication of uh, the renaming of, the naming of the U.S. Postal uh, Building for Stanley Michaels, a former councilman who uh, was responsible for a lot of things in terms of uh, lead poisoning and the Clean Air, Clean Bill Act there. We, Clean Air Bills. Um, this was a bill sponsored by Councilman Espelian. We will be George Washington Bridge uh, Lane at West 178th Street is closed for 12 months. So this will be a problem and traffic will have to be uh, redirected. I believe that is it. Okay, Council reports. Any Council members have any updates? Uh, yeah, everyone on the Occupy Council is in the office. Um, so the public comment period for the environmental assessment of phase two of the Second Avenue subway ended on August 13th. Um, Council Member Ayala and others um, actually advocated for this extension, for this deadline to be extended so more folks would have the opportunity to weigh in. The MCA did come back to us and said they could not do that because they would jeopardize their federal funding. Um, so the council member did provide a uh, written comment where she advocated for the protection of tenants and small businesses that will be subjected to relocation, um, creating a resilience fund to protect these parties, and also providing vital community uses throughout the process of the extension. Um, PD cycle number eight kicked off, and so constituents can now submit their ideas online. We will be starting our neighborhood assembly sometime in early September. On September 20th, we'll be having a hearing with Council Member Levin and the Committee on General Welfare, where we'll be uh, examining accessibility within your city uh, shelter system. And we're also having uh, two naloxone training events in the district on International Overdose Awareness Day, which is on August 31st, where we'll be training participants on the use of naloxone, which is a medication that can, hold, that can reverse uh, overdose effects. And we'll be having folks with uh, lived experience providing remarks. If that is all, we will call for the adjournment. Motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank summer, you. rest of summer. Thank you. Thank you.